Hi, this is Jeff Morgan, and today I want to talk about the recent data breach at the Minnesota Department of Human Services. Well, actually, what I want to talk about, are there three data breaches that they've had over the last year at that agency? And before we get started, uh, down at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, right down here somewhere is the subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that, please. Please subscribe to my channel so you can get notifications every time I post. So uh, let's get started. This is from a recent article in Health IT Security, and it's the Minnesota DHS reports health data breach from 2018 email hack. This article is by Jessica Davis, by the way, and it is from April 11, 2019. The Minnesota Department of Human Services is notifying individuals for the third time in a year that their data was potentially breached by a cyber attack on its email systems. Got that? Okay. The prior breaches occurred in June and July of 2018 when several state agency employees fell victim to phishing attacks. However, the breach went undetected for several months before officials began notifying patients. In total, more than 20,000 patients were impacted by the security event, or events, actually. Uh, and now let's go on to the next paragraph, what she has to say. What's notable about Minnesota's breach is that the state Senate hearing that followed the agency's announcement revealed gaping security issues. Well, is there any surprise to that? A lack of resources, I guess that remains to be seen. I don't have the facts here, obviously. I don't know how many resources they have at the Department of Human Services in Minnesota. However, what I have seen in the past is that resources are typically not a problem. It's not a budget problem because state agencies tend to be overstaffed. It's really a resource allocation problem. The resources aren't allocated properly or they're not managed properly. Uh, honestly, I always think this is a red herring whenever I hear people talking about, oh, we don't have the resources. We can't do a good job. Just give us more money and we'll actually do a good job. Um, I don't buy that. It could be true in this case. I don't know. But let's go on because there are some more disturbing uh, things in this article that we want to talk about. So the latest breach bore similarities to those incidents. On Tuesday, DHS officials notified lawmakers of a third data breach caused by a cyber attack on an employee's email account on or around March 26, 2018. So that is well, almost uh, 13 months ago. That's a long time. As a, re as a result, a hacker gained unauthorized access into a state email account of a DHS employee and sent two emails to a coworker of the employee asking for a wire transfer of funds. Officials said the employees detected the emails as malicious and notified the IT team. Okay, that makes total sense. Wire transfers, that's pretty suspicious. So you notify somebody. The account was secured and the investigation concluded in February of 2019. Wow, so there we go. We're March to February. We're 11 months for an investigation of this. So let's get on to the even more disturbing part of this now. Officials said it was possible the hacker could have potentially obtained some of the content from the compromised email account by viewing or downloading the email's contents. Now, this is the really disturbing part. And the emails contained a wide range of data, including patient names, date of birth, treatment information, and any communications with the agency. The account did not contain any social security numbers or financial data. Well, woohoo! big deal. There was no social security or financial data. Honestly, there was already PHI disclosed here. So who cares if there were social security numbers released along with it? Uh, this is another sort of red herring like, oh, this is, we, we really didn't screw up that bad because we didn't release your social security numbers, just your protected health information. So another disturbing statement next. In response, Minnesota DHS has since deployed a new cybersecurity tool designed to block malicious links and attachments in emails. Well, this is appalling, it's 2019. Are you telling me they didn't have this software before? They didn't have malware detection and malware screening for their email? It's ridiculous. 
They've also since updated their policies and procedures to more effectively detect and respond to security incidents. First of all, this is a violation of the law, the HIPAA security rule 45 CFR 160, 162, and 164 specifically prohibits transmission of PHI in email. So what the hell was PHI doing in emails anyway? In total, about 11,000 patients were impacted by the latest Minnesota DHS breach. So this is all really disturbing because first of all, what this tells me is that Minnesota DHS doesn't have a cybersecurity problem. They have a management problem. And it sounds like they don't have sufficient training for their employees on malicious emails. And if we go back into the article a little bit earlier, we go in and find out more about the state Senate hearing and take the link. Um, another story from Health IT Security by Fred Donovan, and this was October 23rd, 2018. Minnesota IT Services Commissioner Joanna Clyborne faced criticism for the four month delay in informing victims of two phishing attacks that exposed PHI and other personal information on 20,800 clients of the Minnesota Department of Human Services during an October 17th Senate hearing. Well, let's hope she faced criticism for this. This is appalling. To the response to this is all a great concern. In this case, hackers succeeded in accessing email accounts for two DHS employees through successful phishing campaigns in late June and early July. However, victims were not notified until October. Here she goes again, and this is definitely evidence of a management problem in Minnesota DHS. The Minnesota IT security team is not fully resourced. Okay, so she's blaming who? The taxpayers and the government? You don't have enough employees for us? To address these persistent threats. Regardless of those resource constraints, I'm very disappointed and frankly angry that it took us far too long to alert our partners in regard to the DHS potential breach that had occurred. The delay was unacceptable. Well, she's talking here as if she's not actually the manager of the department, which she is. So uh, who is she blaming? Who is to blame but herself? Because the management is always to blame for these sorts of incidents. Again, these are not cybersecurity problems. These are management problems. So here we go again with more abdicating of responsibility. Due to the significant increase in phishing attacks this summer, we were unable to perform deep analysis into the email box contents as we had done previously. To accommodate that workload, we now provide details of all compromised accounts to agency data practices or privacy staff, allowing them the first opportunity to analyze the potentially exploited data. So it looks to me like Minnesota DHS has serious management issues rather than cybersecurity problems. And if you've studied Deming, you already know this. Problems in an organization don't just come out of the blue, they're caused by managers failing to manage. Moreover, they obviously have some HIPAA compliance problems in this department, specifically with transmission security, malware protection, and training. And all of these are part of the 40 or so requirements of the HIPAA security rule. The HIPAA security rule was first published in 2003 and compliance was required by 2005. So there's really no excuse for lack of compliance. But here we are 14 years later and we're still having the same problems. So don't make these rookie management mistakes in your organization. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time.